Hey, this is Jeff Kinley of the Prophecy Pros, and uh, Todd and I are bringing you today a very special bonus episode uh, because Todd is releasing a new book uh, through Harvest House Publishers, and I'm going to hold it up here. It's called <laughs> Daniel. It's the Prophecy Pros, uh, excuse me, the Nonprofits Guy. I'm so used to saying Prophecy Pros, Todd. I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> but Todd's not just a Prophecy Pro. He's also a nonprofit. So uh, anyway, no, this is the Nonprofits Guide to the Book of Daniel. And I've been anxiously awaiting this book because I've known, of course, that Todd's been working on it and stuff. And so when I got mine in my mail, I immediately opened it up and started diving into it. You can't wait to get through the whole thing. Uh, but anyway, Todd, so we're excited. First of all, uh, praise the Lord and congratulations on the release of another Thank you. book in the nonprofit series here. It's like it's very exciting. Thanks. Yeah, it's been fun. The whole series kind of um, has the same format, you know, tries to put handles on. It has a lot of visuals, a lot of graphics and that kind of thing. So it has been fun doing yeah. several books in this series. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited. You know, I guess when each one releases, I'm just as excited and I probably would feel the same way. But I feel like this is the most relevant one I've written just the timing that it comes out and the content and that kind of thing. So I'm really excited about this book. That's so cool. Yeah. I kind of half expect at one of our conferences or maybe at National Religious Broadcasters Convention, you know, sometimes they have these mascots walking around, you know, for <laughs> different, you know, cards. At some point, we've got to get some guy to be the nonprofit, to have a sandwich sign, to walk around, to kind of go, hey, go back to the Harvest House booth and check out these books, hey, you know, on the nonprofit. I like that so, idea. Yeah, and Next we could year definitely at NRB. There we go. I've got some <laughs> friends who look like this, so uh, I think we could probably pull that pull that off pretty easy. Well, let's sure. talk about the book. Let's talk about um, the content of the book, and obviously, it's it's a beautifully illustrated book. Love the colors and stuff. But you get past mm -hmm. the cover, it gets even better because you dive into some great content. Let's let's wow. start with just the person of Daniel. You know, mm -hmm. everybody knows Daniel, right? It's like, oh, Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel and his three. Hebrew friends, but what about just Daniel himself? What yeah. do we know about the person, this guy called Daniel? Yeah, that's important uh, part of the puzzle and the book of Daniel itself, because uh, you really need to know who he is. And he was, you know, there was this period of about 300 years in the Old Testament called the, the period of the prophets, um, when the, the, the major prophets and the minor prophets wrote, wrote all their books. And we won't go into all the details, but they wrote either to the Northern kingdom of Israel or the Southern kingdom of Judah. And basically we're warning the whole time, Hey, judgment's coming. If you don't change your ways, Israel judgment's coming. If you don't change your ways, Judah, and eventually judgment came, Assyria attacked Israel and took them ca to captivity. And then Jeremiah was prophesying among others about uh, Judah, that, that Babylon was going to conquer Judah and take the people mm -hmm. captive. Um, all that to say, Daniel was one of the few exilic, prophets. In other words, his time of prophecy was during the exile. There was a 70 year plus period of exile. Uh, matter of fact, when you read Daniel nine, he, it says that he was reading the prophecies of Jeremiah to find out how long they were going to be in captivity and was, you know, inquiring of the Lord when they got, when they could go back. Uh, but long story short, Daniel was of some type of Royal, uh, background. Uh, and he was a, a strong, good-looking young teenager, one of many that they took into the the king's court, so to speak, in pagan Babylon and tried to brainwash them and retrain them in the Babylonian ways. Um, but Daniel stood tall, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But basically, as a person, Daniel was taken captive as a teenager and decided at that young age that he was going to live for the Lord, even in the middle of a pagan country when his country was judged by God because of their sins. So he's, mm -hmm. he's an amazing character just to look at as a person, the person Daniel. It's amazing to look at his background and his backstory. You know, just hearing yeah. you say that makes me think, okay, so here's a country under God's discipline, under God's judgment, living under a godless regime. Sounds kind of familiar. Sounds uh, very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very contemporary. Who says the Bible yeah. is not relevant? And obviously That's in the right. book of Daniel, you know, they, they are, they're taken captive. I mean, they don't have a choice mm -hmm. uh, to where they're yep. going. And when they get there, uh, Todd, just real briefly, these, these Hebrew teenagers that were uh, brought to Babylon, they were immediately, their faith was immediately challenged, wasn't it? Yeah, it was right, right from the outset, Daniel chapter one, they're at the King's table and they're, they're being again, brainwashed and given new names, new pagan names and everything. 
And, but uh, it says Daniel determined in his heart that he was not going to defile himself with food that had been sacrificed to idols and that kind of thing. So when you read carefully, you know, and that's really the two things I hit on in the book are how practical Daniel is in, in, in terms of standing tall in a pagan culture and doing it in a winsome way. He wasn't a jerk about it. He wasn't uh, fearful. He just stood for the Lord. He had some lines in the sand that he drew, some lines he was not going to cross. And he, he stood on those principles throughout the book. And over and over again, God protected him and rewarded him and used him in a powerful way. Mm. Gosh, that's, that's so cool. And we're going to get yeah. to some of the prophetic things here in just a minute. Maybe we got the cart for the horse, but I, I need to just camp out on this for a second. Because <laughs> yeah. that, that is so inspirational that, mm-hmm. that he and his friends, I love that word, pre-decided. Uh, they, they were young people of great conviction. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, that must have been an encouragement to others, even though we're not told about others uh, that, that may, have, may have stood up or may have resisted in other ways. And we don't hear about that in the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it makes me think, Todd, about sometimes when you know, you'll see someone like in the, uh, the sports arena, maybe in pro football or pro tennis or like this young African-American lady. I think she's, she may even be 16 years old or so. She's very young mm-hmm. that just won this major tennis tournament. And here she is on her knees, thanking God for that. Mm -hmm. And you just want to go, thank you for standing up. Because if you can do that in that arena, that's getting so much attention, surely I can do it in my small world. You know, that gives me such courage. And Daniel and and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did the same thing. And so it's just a real, to me, I just wrote down the words Hebrew hero. You know, Mm -hmm. we need, we need heroes today and we need heroes of the faith today. And every person who follows this example of Daniel can be a hero of the faith. So his, his lifestyle, everything he did really is a great, uh, great encouragement uh, to us. And we know yeah. that even by the end of the book, there's no dirt on Daniel. I mean, they tried to dig up stuff on Daniel and they had to, they had to invent stuff, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so once again, just the integrity of lifestyle. Yeah. You, you know, you've got good character when the worst dirt they can dig up is that we know Daniel prays often and we can yeah. trap him that way. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Daniel, I mean, the Bible does show the warts of most leaders. You know, David and many others had great faults, great, great sins they committed, and, and the Lord still used them, and that shows God's grace. But Daniel and Joseph are two examples in the Old Testament mm-hmm. that were squeaky clean yeah. and just really great examples of what we should shoot for yeah. as believers, even if we fall short and even, even if we don't quite get there. But I think that's one reason God used Daniel so mightily during that time period and, and his three friends as well is, yeah, after the, and that's, that's where I keep out in the first, first part or a large chunk of the book is why it's practical right now, because we look at them standing for righteousness, you know, cause after chapter one, you get to um, chapter two, there's some prophecy stuff in the chapter three, the fiery furnace. And his three friends literally say, uh, I'll paraphrase here, but we know God will save us. But even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down to your idols. Yeah. And yeah. that mirrors, I get goosebumps saying it because it does mirror our time today. And with the example that you shared of that tennis player, she didn't yeah. care what anybody thought. Her conviction was she was going to praise her Lord mm-hmm. and give him the glory and the honor. And uh, she did that in front of millions watching. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing, when one person does that, it gives many more the courage to do the same. So that's what we find in the book of Daniel as well, is that he, he inspired others. And even God connected him to the leaders of the country over and over again and influenced them as well. So yeah. even in a pagan culture, even when everything's crumbling around you, it feels like if you stand for the Lord and trust in his sovereignty, he's going to use you in a way today at this moment like he never has yeah. before. That's right. And there's sort of this, uh, this dual path, you know, that we see in scripture is that sometimes, in fact, many times culture just attacks, you know, believers, uh, Mm -hmm. we're, we're at odds with the culture. Uh, people seem like our enemies, although people themselves are not the enemy, uh, but the spiritual forces behind that, but every now and then God will, will allow and and actually cause one of his own to really prosper, uh, within Mm -hmm. the wicked system. And they right. have, whether it's influence or relationships or expertise or something that allows them to rise up, um, you know, in, in a certain area, whether, you know, be in writing or acting or, or medicine or whatever it might be. 
So mm -hmm. Daniel was one of those special people. Now, now, Todd, let's pivot a little bit here. Let's let's go over to some of the prophecies here because Daniel has a lot of prophecies. We obviously can't talk about all of them here right now, but mm -hmm. what about some of the just the mountain peaks of prophecy that we that we wouldn't know if we didn't have Daniel? Yeah, yeah. I mean, on two on two aspects, he really um, uses prophecy powerfully. Some of it is just showing, and we we had a recent podcast about this, but some of the fulfilled prophecy. The four Gentile kingdoms that have played out mm -hmm. exactly like you said. The the prophecies about Alexander the Great and uh, chapter eleven of Daniel has a ton of very specific intertestamental period prophecies that all came true. Uh, it's just mind blowing the the amount of prophecy that has already been fulfilled. Uh, but also Daniel, like the other prophets, has the mountain peaks of prophecy where he'll be talking about something that's in the immediate context and then without without you know turn it a blinker on, he'll switch lanes and talk about mm -hmm. something regarding the end times. Um, and there's even a couple of places where Daniel is given specific uh, information about what's going to happen in the end. And he didn't know what he was even prophesying. He, he asked to understand it. And it said, mm -hmm. go your own way, Daniel. These things are sealed up until the time of the end. People will look back and will run to and fro and knowledge will increase, you know, looking at prophecy at the end times. In other words, this isn't meant for you. This is meant for the generation at the end times. Yeah. And this is the other reason why this book, I believe, is so compelling and timely for right now, because we're seeing the groundwork being laid for Daniel's end time prophecies, all of which set the framework for the book of Revelation. And mm. they, they link up perfectly. Uh, it's amazing to study those two together. Yeah. In fact, I've heard uh, people call Daniel the revelation of the Old Testament. You know, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it's Daniel is for today. <laughs> if yeah. there was, if there was ever a book of the Bible that you could just go in and almost just li just kind of sift it up and lift out and just bring it into your life today, it would be Daniel. Cause there's yeah. so many parallels, like we said, between Christians and mm -hmm. their culture, uh, between what's going on in the world, what was happening in his world and how that parallels some things that we see going on today. His prophecies about antichrist, about the, the, um, the covenant between Antichrist and the, the children of Israel, Israel, yeah, yeah. and all these things that are going to happen. It's like, man, we're, we're just like living the book of Daniel on two yeah. levels now. Mm -hmm. Isn't that strange? It really is. And I think it's intentional. I think God knew this would be a relevant book at the time of the end. And there's some mm -hmm. verses that hint at that. One of them I mentioned recently, but, and also there's other interesting things like even how Daniel was written, you know, it's, it's 12 mm. chapters. It's literally half narrative and half prophecy. And there's, there's some mm. prophecy in the narrative, but so it was, it was written in that way for us to understand Daniel as a person and as an example for us today and the prophecies. Uh, and also another interesting thing that's inherent to the book is it was also written in two languages. It was written in a Gentile language and a Hebrew language. The prophecies that were directed to his Hebrew uh, brethren were written in Hebrew and those prophecies written to Gentile audiences were written in the Gentile language. So, oh, well, wow. uh, th there's so many things like that, that are so interesting about, about the book of Daniel, um, throughout it, it has a kind of a, what I call the kingdom context. It talks about the kingdom of God versus the kingdoms of men or the Gentile kingdoms and, and the end time kingdom, uh, the millennial kingdom. So, you see these two tracks the, the what we talk about all the time, the, the God's program for the Jewish people and God's program for the mm -hmm. Gentile kingdom and, and how God makes salvation available to everybody, mm -hmm. but he never fit. He never ends his promises to the Jewish people. Uh, Daniel chapter nine, it's, you know, a, a, a prophecy from Daniel's time all the way to the end times. And it's specifically about your people and your city. I mean, it's so Jewish, you can't get away from it. Uh, so, so it's important to understand that those, that two, two, uh, those two aspects. Mm. And the other thing that comes through loud and clear, matter of fact, um, in the book, I talk about, this is probably, if you had to distill it down to one key word, it's sovereignty. God's mm. sovereignty shines mm. through from mm. the opening verse to the closing verse yep. in the book of Daniel. He, he is in control. And that's another yep. encouraging thing that we <laughs> learned from this book is that God is in control of the affairs of men. Gosh, that's so true. I mean, I think about Daniel four and Nebuchadnezzar thinking, "Hey, I'm I'm great. Look at me. I'm the most powerful man in the world." And God mm -hmm. gave him a ride that he never <laughs> forgot. And yeah. uh, you know, some things went wrong with his mind. And mm -hmm. uh, interesting. 
And so anyway, but he ended up crawling around like a cow and eating grass and bird feather claws and all this crazy stuff, his hair grew out. And finally, he just had to admit God's sovereign. He is, he yeah. really is God. You know, m maybe God's doing some of that in our world today. He's allowing some things yeah. to happen that are helping yeah. us and people say that, no, it's our God that really is uh, sovereign. And, you know, so, so yeah. from a prophetic standpoint, Todd, the, the book is powerful because we can see it being played out in many ways right now as we're, as we're sitting here. Uh, but yeah. on the other hand, it's incredibly personal and incredibly encouraging because we have Daniel, who was a man of great, a teenager, a young person of great conviction. Mm -hmm. That conviction doesn't come from, from having a strong will. That conviction yeah. comes from the word of God. And Daniel knew his God and mm -hmm. he knew God's word and he had conviction, but that conviction would be challenged. And that's mm -hmm. where it separates, you know, the men from the boys, as it were. Uh, he was challenged, but, and it ended up, he ended up, you know, facing some things. He went to the lion's den. His friends went to the furnace, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, but even there, you know, even in the furnace, there was a companion with them. So whatever yes. we walk through, Jesus is going to be there right there with us, no matter what happens. And, and he will, just like he did them and like he did Daniel, he will mm -hmm. validate us and he will reward us for standing up and keeping on uh, for a consistent amount of time. So hmm. uh, that, that just really encourages me to have that. And yeah. it's good. Yeah. You know, people, <clears throat> there are commentaries on Daniel and great ones out there. Uh, mm -hmm. But this book right here, The Nonprofit's Guide to the Book of Daniel, look at that, not my face, and uh, <laughs> is a great primer. It's a great guide through the Book of Daniel. Yeah. It'll help you get a perspective, Todd, uh, on this that, that maybe people have kind of thought, how do I put it all the pieces together? You do that yeah. in this book. So thank you for writing it. Oh, it's my pleasure. And yeah, that's definitely the goal is with all the books in this series is I'm trying to make it where people, if they read one page, they can't put it down. They want to read through the whole thing. And by the time they get to the end, they have a good grip on the book itself, the theology that's in it, and more importantly, that it's practical to their life right now at this moment. So that's that's definitely the the goal of the book. And it, it's it's Probably, probably the favorite or one of the favorite ones I've written, at least right now. I guess it's like when you have kids, you're like, this is my favorite kid, but you can't. They're all your favorites. <laughs> that's they right. It all took a lot of work and uh, that kind of thing. And what, one last like thing it. about Daniel, I think that's that, that I want to highlight is that he, he was a teenager when he was taken captive mm. and really he finished strong. That's another thing mm. that comes through in this. By the yeah. time he's in the lion's den, he's an older man. Mm. Mm. And then when he's seeking, uh, God's face in uh, Daniel chapter nine, uh, it's been 70 years. So he's been in Babylon for 70 years and has seen the Assyrian, I mean, the um, Medo-Persians take over mm -hmm. Babylon. So he's seen re regime change. He's seen change, massive change again, but he's still faithful to his Lord and he finished mm -hmm. strong. So yep. anybody can start finishing strong is what counts. Daniel shows us that uh, as well as these other things that we've been talking about. Yep. So if you're a teenager yep. listening, watching this right now, take courage from Daniel. If you're mm -hmm. in your late 80s, perhaps, take yep. courage from Daniel because uh, it's yes. a, a great uh, person in Scripture to study and a great book. Uh, Todd, thank you so much for writing. It's called The Nonprofit's Guide to the Book of Daniel, and you're going to absolutely love it. Buy it right now. So uh, this is Jeff Kinley with the Prophecy Pros. Uh, thank you, Todd, my brother, for being with me. And, you and you guys, just to let you guys know, Todd and I are part of a mutual admiration society here. Uh, we really, we love, we love each other's books and stuff, but we're, we there's do. no, co there's no competition here. We, we really love each other's work yeah. and obviously the work we get to do together as well. So it's a real yeah. joy. So brother, thank you so much. I'm proud of you. Likewise. Thank you so much. Yeah. Iron sharpens iron mm -hmm. and, uh, you make me better brother. It's, it's a pleasure to know you. And, uh, I'm trying to catch up to you on books, but you keep writing more. So I guess I'll just have to keep writing. <laughs> we just have to live a long time. That's all. That's right. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. God bless. We'll see you soon.